Hello and welcome to the Adventure Toolkit tutorial number three. My name is Glenn Storm and I'm from Hot Iron Productions. Today we're going to talk about trigger systems. A trigger is any game object set to activate or trigger another game object. So a system of triggers is a system of game objects set to turn each other on and off. And we're going to explain first why that would be interesting to turn on a game object during runtime. Here in our scene we've been working on, we have a mover tool set to move a sphere towards a target. And I'd like to just play that real quickly to demonstrate, sure enough, it moves. Now let's look at the inspector window, and you'll see this checkbox at the top. It's checked, and that indicates that this tool is currently active. Let's deactivate it for a moment, and you'll see in the hierarchy, the mover tool is now grayed out, indicating that it is deactivated. So, when we hit play, nothing happens, and that is as expected. If we select the mover tool still during runtime and activate it at runtime, okay, now it is active, it waits half a second, and it moves the sphere over the course of two seconds, just as we configured it. Okay. This is cool because we want to be able to turn things on and off at runtime based on timed uh, sequences or on events such as collisions. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to go ahead and make a new game object. I'm going to call it Trigger. I'm going to set this to be something that activates the mover. And under the standard assets package that comes free with Unity, I just happen to import it here in our project. Under scripts, under general scripts, there's an activate trigger. I'm going to go ahead and drag that onto our trigger object and make a tool. Now let's look at some of the properties that the activate trigger gives us. It has an action, so it can activate, deactivate, enable, etc. And it has a target. These are the only two properties we're concerned with right now. We want to activate the mover tool. So I'll go ahead and drag the reference to the target so it can activate the mover. The activate trigger doesn't work by itself. It assumes that there's a collider component. So let's go ahead and give it one. Under physics, let's give it a sphere collider. Any collider will do because all colliders have this checkbox called is trigger and that's provided for us simply to do what we want it to do right now which is find some other component on this game object that accepts triggers and then it will do its thing so I've just checked it and that means that anything that collides with this trigger is now set to activate the mover cool so all I need now is something to collide with it. So I'm going to create another game object. I'll call it Cylinder. And I'll give it some mesh rendering components so we can see what's going on. And I'm also going to give it some physics components because, as you'll see, it needs them in order to collide with the trigger. So I'm going to give it a rigid body first because I want it to fall with gravity. And then I want to give it a capsule collider. Just any collider will work. It just needs to collide with our trigger. So I'll move it up because I assume it will fall with gravity. And I expect it to collide now with the trigger, which will then in turn activate the mover. Let's see if that works. If we hit play, we see the cylinder fall. We see the trigger then turn on the mover, and the mover then moves our sphere. So we have now created a simple trigger system. It is event-based because it is going to trigger based on the event that this uh, is collided with something. It then activates the mover, which is timed. It has a delay and things like that. But this kind of simple trigger system could be used in a variety of ways for your project, such as a simple door that you'd like to open when the player comes close to it, or a cinematic cutscene that begins to play when a player reaches a certain point in the level, or any other things like a trap or a monster box or some effects or sounds. 
this kind of trigger system could be used in all those cases, but we can talk about more complex event management in our next tutorial. I hope you liked this one. Please stay tuned for the next one.